Let's take a look at some tips and tricks for Windows 13. Some of these you may know, some of them you mightn't know. Uh, so it's probably worth watching uh, the various ones. I'll jump about a bit. They, they don't follow any particular pattern. Let's switch to a layer that's got some information on it. And uh, first thing I want to look at is the direction arrows on doors. You've probably looked at some of these doors and gone, well, we draw them the other way around. Well, that's pretty easy to change. You can see here that this has got the direction arrows on a door and a window. In the object info palette we've got direction arrows and if you want to change them the other way around just choose reverse and that will reverse the direction arrows. Now You'll notice there are a few other options here and for doors and windows that in plan view would show a, uh, some kind of opening direction for example an awning hung window, a hopper window, a sliding window, a pivot window then you can also optionally choose to show some geometry in 2D. And here's an example. These are awning hung windows. And we're showing the opening of the awning hung window as a dashed line in 3D. By the way, that dashed line is defined here in, uh, in the direction arrows. So this, this here is setting the, the dash style, thickness and colour. Alright, so if you didn't want to see that in a plan view but you do want to see the direction arrows in 3D then you can just come to direction arrows here and set it to 3D only and then you won't see the, uh, the opening uh, indicators in a plan view. For sliding doors well let's choose this one and change it to a sliding door, a sliding window I should say. You'll see that we'll get an arrow here if we have the 2D option turned on here. If I have it on 3D only then we'll only see those arrows in 3D and by that I mean that arrow there you'll see in 3D. If you also want to see it in a plan view then you can turn on either the inside which will put the arrow on the inside or the outside if you want to put it on the outside. Now with, obviously with the sliding door the reverse options are not going to make any difference. So the reverse options are only going to make a difference when it's a hinged unit. So that's uh, all about direction arrows. Let's take a look at uh, the door hardware. Here's a combination unit and we've just got one of the standard wind door uh, handles on here, which is a circular one. There are a few options with this. I'll set this back to a flush door just for this exercise. And let's just rotate the view a little bit. So we can see the handle. Okay. Now there's a few options for hardware. It's again here in the object info palette we've got a circular handle, a D handle, which is like that. Uh, we've got a flush pull, which is normally used on a sliding door, a lever handle and a push plate. <coughs> Now if this was a pair of doors, a number of doors too, and we wanted to have um, a door handle on both those doors, then you use the uh, plural one down here. If you wanted, say, uh, lever handles on both, then you choose the bottom one. So you'll notice the list at the top here is um, singular and down here it's plural. So if you choose from this second list and there are two doors you'll get a handle on both doors. Now further down in this list this allows you to actually develop custom handles and put them onto doors as well. If I choose this one I'll get a custom handle that I have created and that's it there. And this is a symbol and the symbol has to have the exact name that you can see here which is handle symbol 1. And it's just uh, some 3D geometry so it's a 3D only symbol and you'll see it here in the object info palette. 
Let's go ahead and edit that from the resource browser by right clicking and choosing edit. And I'll do a fit to objects. So here's the geometry. So what's important about creating this is to get the insertion point right. Let's turn on the grid and I'll show you what the insertion point is like. Basically it is inserted around the 0, 0, 0. So the insertion point needs to be uh, right there at 0. So if you look at it in a front view, you'll see that this is right uh, at 0, 0. If you look at it in a side view, this is also uh, at 0, 0. So this way, when you... Let's go out of there and back to our drawing. In the geometry dialog, if we click on door and members, you'll see here that the handle position is mid door. So we can change it to mid rail or custom. And then I can enter a custom height for this. Let's just make a difference so you can see it. Let's say 750. Click OK. This is going to drop down the wall, the door a little bit. But by creating the insertion point uh, in the right position, you can then control this predictably from, uh, from that geometry dialog. The next thing I want to look at is uh, folding doors. And here's a folding door here. When you select a folding door uh, under window door type, the number of doors changes from what you see for a normal door, which is the number of doors is just one field, to getting a left hand value and a right hand value. So you can change these separately for each side of the door or window of the sorry of the door. For reflected ceiling plans, there's a system built into Windor for showing things uh, more predictably. Typically on a reflected ceiling plan you don't want to see the, de the detail in doors and windows, you don't want to see IDs but, and you want to fill in the openings. If we look at the navigation palette, all of the 2D components in Windor objects are in this WD2D class. If I turn that off then all of the components are going to disappear. If I also turn off the IDs then uh, mostly everything else has disappeared. What we also, what we now need to turn on is the WD ceiling class and when you turn that on you'll get wall lines filling in the openings and you'll get a dashed line where the doors are indicating where the opening of the door uh, will go. The style of that dashed line there is set in pens and colors under here this here 2D reflected ceiling plan doors. So you can set the thickness, the dash style and the color. So normally this on your reflected ceiling plan you would save a view or your viewport would have the ID and the loci uh, and the WD2D off and it would have the ceiling on. For your construction drawings you're going to have the WD2D on, the ceiling off and probably the IDs back on again. When you change a window window into a door, instead of getting one from a library, let's go ahead and do this. We'll change this from an awning home window into a hinged left door you'll see that the sill settings are still maintained. If I go up here into geometry and turn off the sill, that's the sill on the wall. We'll set also set this 2D line here to none and go to the frame, internal trim and check that that is also set to none and external trim and that's all off as well. You'll click OK and you'll still see these lines here. The reason for that is that in the form dialog the create door threshold is turned on. Now this is on by default for windows so when you switch from it being a window to a door it's still going to be on. I and mean, sometimes you do want a door threshold 
um, particularly for external doors, but for internal doors you want that off. Um, the other mistake that you will see is that people will accidentally turn on this ceiling class and that is going to put in these lines here that we were just talking about a moment ago. So that's another trick. You've got to make sure that the WD ceiling class is turned off. Now one other option uh, that's new to Windows 13, let's select the tool again and we'll go here, we'll choose a door in copy or apply, let's choose a door from our symbol library, apply as the default, OK. Now set frame to, uh, when you have a, a door or window inserted into a wall and the wall thickness uh, or the, the jam thickness is not matching or doing what you want, you can you can set uh, the frame to be the default thickness which is I think um, 100, no thickness, set it to be the wall thickness which will set the frame to match whatever thickness the wall is, or the new option here is wall thickness always. Now if you set this to wall thickness always and click OK, when you place a door or window in a wall it's automatically going to adjust to the adjust the jams to the thickness of the walls. So you can see here that that same symbol has automatically adjusted here to set the jams to go to the full width of the wall and same with this one. Finally let's take a look at the menu items. and we'll begin by selecting this door here and we want this to be closed in 3D and you'll see here that we have open in 3D doors let's set that to none and so that will mean that these doors will be closed in 3D and by that I mean that when you go to a 3D view they look closed. So the first menu item is create window elevation. You select the window object, choose the item from the menu and then just click OK to the two dialogues and this will generate an elevation, a filled um, 2D representation of this window. This is just a white filled rectangle and uh, the lines that make up the elevation all grouped together. And you can see that because of the fill you could use it in a, in a set of 2D elevations. Because it's filled it will cover over you know, brickwork or weatherboards or something in a wall. The next uh, menu command is the open close window 3D. Let's switch to a 3D view and we'll go open close window 3D. Now we can do doors, windows or both. Let's choose both in this case and click OK and this will go through the whole drawing and open all of the doors and windows in 3D. Now one thing you will notice with the windows is that they open by a random amount and you'll see if I regenerate this they'll actually change each time I regenerate it. Um, this just gives a more natural look to uh, 3D presentation drawings because it's very rare that all of the, the windows are open the, the same amount. And the final menu command is show hide window detail and this is just a global way of simplifying the 3D geometry to cut down on file size, possibly if a file is going to get archived or whatever. And we can go show hide window detail and let's go 2D only. And you'll see that when I click OK, these objects are all going to simplify themselves a bit, which will cut down on the, uh, the, the file size. And you only have to turn it back on again for the geometry to come back. This command can also be used to regenerate window objects and this is something that you have to do if you open a, a Vectorworks 10, 11, 12 file in Vectorworks 2008. The first thing you have to do is to regenerate the window objects so that they take on the new attributes of the window 13 objects.